One, two, three, four, five. Welcome back to the TMCJ podcast. Oh my god, I actually screwed up the name of the podcast. TMCJ podcast, thank you very much. What, what did you say? I thought I said TMCG podcast. I think you said J. Did I? Maybe. Well, hopefully <laughs> anyway. you, you people at home can uh, tell me whether or not I fucked up the name of our own podcast. But uh, welcome back. This is episode 25 of the TMCJ podcast. Um, quite an auspicious number, if only because it comes before 26, which is the half year mark. We're, we've been doing this for almost oh, really? half a year now. Wait, so, hang on, we're one week before half a year? We're one week before half a year. Holy fuck. Nice. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, a, a, a year is 52 weeks, so 26 is uh, the halfway mark. So so next week will be the uh, half a year mark for our podcast, which is, again, insane. Um, but yeah, I, I've, got a, uh, I've got a topic that I want to jump right into, uh, mainly because it's near and dear to our hearts with how much we rag on social media. Um, now, there was a... I, again, we, we try to veer away from politics, and so I'm going to keep this introduction as neutral as possible. There was a very high-profile uh, banning on Twitter um, and Facebook in oh, the U.S., this. Yeah. Uh, followed by quite a few more bannings on Twitter, and I presume on other social media, but I, I wasn't really following those. That isn't what I want to talk about, though. What I want to talk about is the international reaction to it, not by people, but by other world leaders. Um, specifically... <laughs> Headed, spearheaded by the Mexican government, the president of Mexico, and several other world leaders, including Poland, Germany, I think Angela Merkel's on this, they're all starting a campaign against social media companies because social media has become so ubiquitous. It's how a lot of these leaders talk to their people and get messages out. If they yeah. can just arbitrarily take somebody off social media, a, a, a world leader, a current world leader, then that is a serious threat to them because if you think about it from their perspective, there's a foreign cartel that has just decided, nope, you can't talk to your people anymore. Um, yeah, so. it's kind of um, a weird paradigm we've got ourselves into in this day and age where people who run the social media have power over the president. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of showing up the way the world's going, I suppose, with, you know, the internet and all. Well, yeah, it's it's almost like um, in previous ages of U.S. politics, the politicians had to kind of uh, kiss up to the, the oil companies or the train companies or whatever because they had, well, they, they wielded quite a bit of power or the, the trade unions or something like that. Now it's the social media companies. Mm. Um, and so I think this is... This is it was kind of a wake-up call for a lot of other leaders that didn't like um, the person who got banned. Um, yeah. I bet Vladimir Putin is real worried about getting his Neopets account banned. Oh, God. I, that guy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> but people in other... Kind, Poland actually uh, passed a very interesting law that I, I think is... Um, I, I'm, I think it was actually a very intelligent way to handle it. Um, they passed a law that said no one in Poland can be banned from a social... If, if the social media companies want to do business in Poland, they can't ban anyone in Poland for doing something that isn't illegal in Poland. Right, okay. Which I think makes a whole lot of sense, because if the person hasn't committed a crime, and these things are supposed to be platforms for people to speak their mind, then there should be no reason they get banned. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I'm sure people would find loopholes, but for the general... Yeah. <laughs> but it just... It, it The whole thing just made me laugh because, you know, Angela Merkel and the president of Mexico, two people that were not the biggest fans of Trump, both of them are now essentially not taking his side, but they they've kind of got the same enemy now. Yeah, the enemy... Oh, was it? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
That's, uh... I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I, I've always been in the opinion that people need to watch themselves a bit more on what they do and don't say on social media. Yeah. In, in the way I handle things is that I would not say anything on social media that I would not say to a person face to face in real life. Yeah, uh, I, I, I kind of. Oh, sorry. Did you have more to that thought? No, no, no. no. I, I've, I've, I agree with you. I just don't like... So, you can be a jackass in real life without getting arrested. You might get punched in the face, but you wouldn't yeah. get arrested. You wouldn't get, like, I don't know, to, to put it in real life terms, if you were walking down the street and um, some guy was walking opposite you and he was ugly and you're like, man, you're fucking ugly, right to his face, right? Mm -hmm. um, he might punch you in the face, but a cop isn't going to show up and say, all right, you're banned from sidewalks. Like, right. but that's what happens on social media. So I, like, I agree with you. That's the same way I conducted myself. I tried to, um, I tried to have like the same kind of conversations on social media that I would have in real life in person. Hmm. Uh, that being said, <laughs> I would also do things that I wouldn't do in social media, which was just to post something completely random and nonsensical and send it out into the world. I wouldn't climb mean, up on top of my roof and just shout something nonsensical. Yeah. But I, well, I do... I mean, a lot more people will hear it on social media. <laughs> <laughs> that That's the weird thing. And I, I get it. Like, the, the drive to try and, like, ban kind of unpleasant people... Um, but yeah, my my opinion is even if I wouldn't do it, it's not illegal. They they have the right to do it in real life. They should have the right to do it on social media. Mm -hmm. um, you or can at least be in a, America, that's the case. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There there are other countries where they, they definitely don't. Um, and yeah, <laughs> we won't get too deep into that. But one of the most prominent countries where they don't, um, they. Uh, they have their own social media, and they don't allow the ones that are based out of Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah? Yeah, China has all of its own uh, social media stuff, um, like Weibo and a couple other different platforms. I'm trying to remember what they're all called. Back in college, we tried to download a few of them just to see what they were like, but they were all blocked, and we didn't have a VPN at the time. Right. So you've got to be in China to run them? You've got to be in China just to get them. Now, I don't mm. think that's the case. Now, I think you can get them outside of China, um, either through a VPN or they might just allow you to download them. We also tried to get... Um, so, North Korea also has its own proprietary, like, bootleg version of Windows and, like, Firefox and stuff. And it's called, like, you know, the Great Leader Operating System and, like, <laughs> the, the, the Red Star Browser or something. I'm not kidding. That's what they were... Like, we, we tried to get copies of these back in college just to see how shitty they were. Yeah. But they were all, like, you know, they were all blocked by, by VPNs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, other examples, I mean, I think it's... I'm going to get this wrong. I, it's either the Philippines or Singapore... One of them still has a monarchy, and it's illegal there to say anything critical of the monarch. And so there are people who have been arrested for posting things on social media that are critical of the uh, the royal family. Yeah. Oh, we got plenty of people being critical about our royal family. <laughs> but at the same time, a lot of people really love our royal family. Yeah, the British, the British relationship with the monarch has always been something that's been fascinating to me. Because the monarch still exists, the monarch still has power, still draws a uh, like a paycheck from the government, and still technically owns several countries around the work, the earth, including the you know the British Isles. But mm. they don't exercise that power, and the people kind of can be like openly critical. And but at the same time, uh, endearing. It's almost like a familial relationship, you know. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it's a, a large part of the reason that everyone likes it so much is that it's steeped in the history. It's saying that we're not getting rid of the, uh, you know, we're not replacing, we're not bringing in anything new. Um, it's our heritage, and I don't know. We kind of like having it around. Yeah, it's like. Um... 
a national icon. Yeah, it brings in a lot of tourism. Hmm. So, yeah. Also, it's just kind of cool. I mean, <laughs> like having a, 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 I don't know, first edition shiny Pokemon card. <laughs> <laughs> that is, the Queen of England, she's a shiny Charizard. She is. She's so shiny. Oh. My um. God. Uh, but yeah, like, not 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 even America's got one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I mean, that's true. I. I mean, yeah. the the rest of the Commonwealth still has her on the money. Hmm. Like, uh, what is it? Australia, Canada, South Africa. Oh my God! Can you imagine if Twitter banned the Queen? Oh my god. <laughs> then there would be hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> the Redcoats are coming. I wonder if the royal family have an official Twitter. I'm going to look I, Sorry. These days, I, I would it would surprise me if something as prominent as the royal family of the UK didn't have a Twitter right? account. Or, or social media accounts essentially dedicated to them. Um... Yeah, I want to see all these, like, pictures of corgis and things. It's probably... Well, to be fair, it's probably run by some sort of administrator. Oh my god. Okay, Queen Elizabeth II has a Twitter page. <laughs> of course she uh, does. I mean, yeah, I, I doubt she's probably never seen it herself, but... <laughs> yeah, it's probably run by somebody else. The way most politicians have their Twitter accounts run by, like, some college admin or something. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm waiting for the corgis. I haven't seen the corgis yet. You just expected it to be nothing but corgis. Yeah, corgi pictures. I mean, that's what the internet's for. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. There's um. It it has been it has been interesting and and anyway, getting back to the like the thing that I yes, originally sorry. brought this up for, uh, Twitter has been, well, Twitter and Facebook have both been suffering in terms of their stock price because of this international now controversy. Um, Twitter, I think their their stocks dropped from $53 a share down to the mid 40s, which lost them a total of something like $5 billion in company value. Um, yeah. Facebook What's has had something picture? similar happen to them, you know, losing stock value because of it. I, I also I kind of imagine that a lot of people probably added Twitter accounts the moment they found out that um, Trump was banned from it. Actually, it's it's kind of the opposite. People, they, I think. Uh, do you know the comedian Jonathan Pye? I think you spoke told me about him recently. Yeah, he he put out a video of it that that made that made a whole, like that made me me laugh. Um, it was. The, the way he described it is, you know, what, what, what's the reason to get on Twitter now? Like, people used to log in because Trump was like this abusive uncle who was also funny. And he just, he was funny and endearing, but also he would slap you in the face or something like that. It was just, so people would log in just to, to see the stupid shit that he would be posting. Yeah. Um, and now that's I mean, gone. So I think Twitter has lost one of their um, biggest draws because it's already memes. Twitter's already a, like a horrendously toxic place. Oh yeah, I mean just just right now I'm being told to follow Ubisoft. Oh god. Which obviously you know I've used on that. And the other person is telling me to follow is Mark Ruffalo. Who the fuck's Mark Ruffalo? The guy that. Plays the Incredible Hulk, who's just a massive. Oh, that dude. guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. why those two things? God. Uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, sorry. Enough bashing of Twitter, I guess. Yeah, I, I can, we won't drone on about this too long, but I did want to talk about that right off because I found it very fascinating. Kind of law of unintended consequences. Um, you take an action that seemed fairly straightforward, and suddenly you've got several countries breathing down your neck. Yeah. Worrying. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's something that needed to happen. I mean, social media is probably, in terms of government regulation, it's one of the re least regulated industries out there. Um, I personally think the government should regulate as little as possible, but even I'm starting to recognize, like, there's something deeply unhealthy 
going on when it comes to social media. Mm. Uh, but of course, who am I to talk? I don't use social media. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, we neither of us particularly use it all that much. Yeah, I mean, I apart mean, from Discord, which is technically social media, but yeah, that's kind of a closed community we live in. I don't. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's a private server, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's not really. It's it's more like just being in a chat room with your friends to use a early two thousands metaphor. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that that honestly is. I don't want to dwell on this for too long. Um, yeah, let's get move on. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was the only topic I had written down. Oh shit. Okay. Mm. But. Uh. Okay. Well, why, did you have something you wanted to talk about? No, I was about to brainstorm and get all that kind of shit. <laughs> Go for it. Oh, okay, we'll talk for a bit. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just going to take this opportunity to brag. I managed to uh, get my hands on a uh, NVIDIA Founders Edition 3090 new graphics card The that have been... It came out in September, but it's been in short supply since September. Um amongst several other pieces of like high-end electronics like the new Xbox, the new PlayStation that are just basically out of stock everywhere. I only managed to pick one up because Raymond pinged me when Best Buy suddenly had announced they had new stock in and I dropped yeah. what I was doing to get on their website and quickly buy it. Um, but yeah. yeah no, I've, I've heard everyone on the Hive's been going crazy about you getting this thing and I'm like I don't really know about hardware, but I'm happy for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new uh, video card. Yeah. Technology. So be even better YouTube videos? Uh, yes, actually. Nice. So I have some of the stuff that I've been editing, like it's a lot smoother now. And what I was talking about yesterday when we were playing Door Kickers, um, recording has that... become a lot easier. Very in graphically intensive game. Well... <laughs> It, it, the game isn't graphically intensive, but the the video card's ability to handle simultaneous tasks. So I'm playing the game. I'm also recording the video twice, recording audio, and that's not causing the game or the video recording to lag at all. Yeah. So. Okay. Are you ready for a topic? Yes, I'm ready for a topic. Uh, greatest or most shocking plot twists in a series of TV or game. Well, to preface... Oh, TV or game. Um, mm. Well, I mean, old book or whatever. Well, I was just thinking there was a pretty big plot twist in the movie we watched last night. There was, but we could save that for part two. <laughs> I know, it's, just, it's the first thing that popped into my mind. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, let me think about that for a second. Do you have one in, one in mind that you can start with? Because I, I actually have to think for a second. Uh, I have to think for a second as well, but I will, I'll blab for a bit. God, we're apparently uh, okay. terrible at this. So, yeah, it's one of those topics where, where you're like, man, I feel like every TV program at some point has a plot twist to keep things interesting. But a lot of them don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I know there have been movies and TV shows out there that I have watched and been like, like Mind oh boredom. shit, I did not see that coming. Yeah. But I'm having a really, really hard time thinking of one now like one that <laughs> one that really stuck out because you're right there, there are twists in a lot of stories and they mm. tend to be kind of a dime a dozen i'm gonna use one from my childhood from a book um okay. which is probably pretty familiar to everyone now uh and it was kind of traumatic when i read it um the song of ice and fire better known these days as game of thrones which is the name of the first book in the series uh the second book in the series a clash of kings has a, the plot twist the the red wedding which i guess is oh that's true that was it, so in the books you cool. don't see it coming you, you like you're reading through the starks seem like the heroes of the story they're the only good guys and you're just cheering them on yeah and i don't then, think you see it coming in the tv series either that's well then they they stayed true to the book because i didn't i only watched the first two episodes of the tv show and that just made me want to read the books again so i just read the books yeah. again um but yeah, that that that's a there. That's one. That was a hugely shocking plot twist, and I remember being like 
traumatized by that because I read those books when I was like twelve, I think. Yeah, I, I remember mean, the traumatized the... is probably too strong a word, but it it was shocking. Yeah, absolutely. When at the time when it came out, uh, I had not seen any Game of Thrones, and I wasn't particularly interested in it. And uh, yeah, I remember just everyone was talking about it at the time. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, yeah, to, so for some context, I feel like the Game of Thrones, or at least that particular episode, has been out for long enough now that we can talk about it. Yeah, to, so to describe, I'm going to describe it in the book because I personally think that the book did it better because okay. fuck you. The, the, Wait, fuck me? No, no, I'm just, I was just, I was just a general <laughs> fuck you out to the world. That's a social media <laughs> fuck you. I just sent it out into the ether. Uh, um... <laughs> but no, uh, the oh excuse me, I just burped into the microphone. Um, maybe it didn't come through. What happens in the in the book series, uh, to give a general plot synopsis, is one of the seven noble houses uh, has essentially risen up in rebellion with another one of the seven ro uh, noble houses against the king, because the son of the king decided he was going to execute the head of that noble house's like household on fallacious charges um instead of doing what they agreed to do which was to just send him off to take like an oath of celibacy and live on this wall far in the north guarding the kingdoms and so they they basically the the king's son like you know screwed screwed over a deal and then they the house rose up in rebellion now the rebellion is going very well until uh, the person who's leading it, the son of the guy that got executed, Rob Stark, until he decides that he's going to break a marriage vow with one of the lesser houses and instead marry this woman that he just kind of fell in love with and met randomly. And that house gets bitter. So they, they, they renegotiate and they agree that you know his uh, uncle is going to instead marry someone from that lesser noble house and the wedding is going on and the reason it's called the red wedding is the guy from that lesser, no lesser noble house cuts a deal in the background with one of the the loyalist houses and they murder everyone at the wedding party all the men um and, and the big dog goes and the big doggos, yeah, they had dire wolves. Uh, that that's the saddest part, honestly. It is because those wolves were fucking awesome, but so they many were. of them end up dead in the series. And so that that was it because you you think everything's going well, like they're winning. You think it's it's kind of getting like things are getting good, and then that happens, and they slaughter some of the most prominent characters in the series up until that point. Mm. Uh, yeah, and it's beautifully done. Yeah. And in the in the books, they they lead up to it. You really don't see it coming until it happens. At least that was my you know my experience with it, reading it. Yeah. Uh, I realized that was a whole big opportunity for me to think of it as one of but, my own. But you yeah. didn't do it. I didn't. I fucked up. I was thinking about Game of Thrones. Um, God, it's quite yeah. Like you said. Just now, there's a lot of very recent stuff where there were plot twists. But I can't really talk about that. Uh, oh my god. Um, hold on. I'm I'm gonna t I'm taking a peek at my uh, game library because I know there are other games that had. Oh, um, Knights of the Old Republic, the original one. I never played it. Okay. Well, again, let me. Uh, <laughs> go through that so knights of the Old republic is a star wars game set three thousand years before the events of the original star wars movies um the main character is somebody who is a jedi who's lost their memory and you they the galaxy's at war there's a civil war headed up by a jedi like a fallen jedi on one side and then the republic and the rest of the jedi order on the other side um, you go through the game, train yourself back up, you never recover your memories until near the end of the game where it's revealed that your character was originally the head of the rebellion, like who's leading the fight against the Republic, one of the, the evil, the fallen Jedi, the Sith, 
and a strike team had essentially boarded the ship, blown everything away. You were almost dead. They brought you back and erased your memories and used you as a weapon against your former apprentice, who is still leading the uh, the rebellion. And you have a choice at that point. You can either decide, okay, go dark side and continue to try and kill off the Republic now that you've got your memories back, or decide, okay, I've changed my mind, I was wrong, and then fight your old apprentice and then stop the rebellion. So it's, it, and again, it, it's a, a, another plot point that's masterfully done. Like you, I didn't see it coming the first time I played through the game until literally the very end when yeah. it happened. Oh. Mm -hmm. Spec Ops the line. Oh, that's another good one. Yeah. Spec Ops yeah, the line. That's a big twist right at the end. Uh, where it turns out, how is it? it? Turns out you're actually just a fucking crazy person. And you've been <laughs> shooting a bunch of people on your own and gone rogue or something. When you, like, yeah. For most so, of the game, you think you're doing a noble mission. Yeah, Spec Ops The Line is... It, it's a fairly generic shooter, uh, like third-person, over-the-shoulder shooter, set mm -hmm. in uh, like a post-apocalypse Dubai. Um, I say post-apocalypse, but basically some sort of a natural disaster happened and buried most of the city in sand. Um, you play most of the game thinking you're part of a small special ops squad who's in there trying to find um, essentially another relief force, an American relief force that went rogue. You get to the end and you find out that you've been there the whole time, that the force that went rogue was you, and you've just been wandering around the city trying to convince yourself that you're actually a good person and haven't committed all these atrocities. And it, like, the game does a very good job, like, slowly showing the character's descent down into madness. Um, or I guess it would be more accurate to say slowly revealing the character's madness to himself. Mm. Very good game. Love that game. Very generic in terms of gameplay, but the writing in it and yeah, the story is what it's what really drives it. Yeah, for. yeah. Uh, God, I don't know why I'm struggling so hard. I, I've I read know. and seen so many things. It's what? like. Considering the fact that we have an entire media segment that is usually overflowing with stuff that we want to talk about, it's shocking that we can't think of this. <laughs> I mean, we've definitely got an overflowing media segment, but... Um... Uh, fuck, Deus Ex. Wait. Well, a, a Deus Ex Machina is, is literally what we're... well... Wait, Deus Ex? Oh. Oh, the you're talking about the um, the original game. Yeah, I don't think that. I mean, was there mm. too much one? I mean, I, the the game was pretty much like, hey, Illuminati, and that was the the plot line, as far as I remember. Mm. <laughs> hey, wait, how about the original Star Wars trilogy? The the whole Luke, I am your father thing. That's true. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's so old that I don't really it's think so it's so old that. that you don't think of it, but when it came no. out, it did. Um, like, that was a big, I mean, uh, big twist. I think it's. I think I knew about the twist before going into the film because. Well, yeah, the phrase "Luke, I am your father" is so ubiquitous now in like the the cultural yeah. mind that, of course, that people are going to yeah. Harry Potter. You're a wizard, thing. Harry. Snape turning out to not be a total twat. Um, uh, I mean, there's a few plot twists in Harry Potter, actually. There are. Uh, I don't know. I didn't read the books. I watched the movies like long after the books had been out, so I, I knew a lot of the plot twists ahead of time. So that's another one that maybe it just didn't strike me because I already knew mm. about them. Oh, uh, okay. Dumbledore dying. I mean, that was a big plot twist. Oh, yeah, that was a big... Oh, yeah, that reminds me of an even more current kind of thing where someone died. Mm. Uh, which I, I'm not even going to hint at because I don't want... I've already been burnt by someone telling me off for saying it out loud. <laughs> oh? Uh, yeah. You'll have to tell me... In, yeah, tell, tell me that off the podcast. 
Yeah, yeah. I actually don't know what you're talking about. Well, okay, it, it, superhero related. No, nope. still nothing. Nope, still nothing. Okay. Wait, are you talking cool. about um, like Avengers? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to be as vague about it as humanly possible. All right. Well, uh, I mean, that's still pretty vague. Um, and there's 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 quite a bit of death. So mm. that that's actually I wouldn't call that a, a the one I'm thinking of at least. That's not so much a plot twist and more of a um, just like that's 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 a good ending. Mm. But, uh, I suppose Shadow of Mordor had a had a few because I um, haven't I haven't beaten the game. Have you not? No, I I played oh, I it for a Shadow. while, like a few years ago, but never beat it. Wait, is Shadow of Mordor the first one, or is it Shadow of War? A Shadow of War is the second one. Shadow of Mordor okay, is good. the first one. Uh, yeah, Shadow of Mordor, the first one was really really good, and it fleshed out a lot of the. Uh, universe of Lord of the Rings uh, of Middle Earth, um, particularly with the fact because obviously it revolves around Celebrimbor, mm -hmm. who is the uh, an Elven, uh, well, a deceased Elven lord, I think. Well, I know he's deceased. I'm just not sure if he's a lord. Um, and he was the one who originally created the Rings of Power for Sauron. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so I remember when this game came out, like. I think the the exact quote I remember from uh, Zero Punctuation was, um, you know, he, he was calling the developers psychotic because they're creating a new piece of canon in a beloved franchise in a video game format, and it he's like this is just tailor made to like just piss off fanboys, and but yeah. so unsur but surprisingly it was it was good and it was well received and it was well written. It was. Uh, the dwarf was a piece of shit in that game, and I think he could have done without it. But <laughs> um, just because the missions he gave were so boring. Um, but yeah, the um, it goes into how I don't know, a, a lot more in depth into actually Sauron himself, what he was like before yeah. he was in the suit of armor. Um, I don't know if that's not a plot twist, but yeah, is is that a I mean, you you did make me th think of another fresh information on on such a significant series that everyone had just kind of assumed was set in stone. This is gonna drive um, me like nuts. Like after this, I guess. Oh yeah. Ha Halo might be a good uh, one to have a plot. To like the original Halo game had the twi like the flood showing up. That like you think it's just a aliens versus humans game, and then all of a sudden zombie plague. Hmm. I'm not sure if you'd really consider that so much of a, a twist. There's a couple twists in that game, like the little floating orb robot guy that you think is helping you is revealed to actually be trying to use you to activate the Halo Ring and kill all life. Um, the Halo Ring? Halo Ring, yeah. What's a Halo Ring? Have you never played Halo? I have played Halo. I've played Reach. Okay. The game is named after the Halo Rings. These giant ancient super weapons that are made to wipe out life in the galaxy so that the Flood can't feed on anything. Uh. <laughs> no, I didn't know about that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty major... I guess if you played Reach, you wouldn't know that because Reach takes place before they discover the Halo Rings or the Flood. So okay. during Reach, it is just a straightforward humans versus aliens um, kind of scenario. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> With that, though, I think we should probably end this segment because we are kind of just waffling on a bit. Not really. This is gonna drive me nuts. If if I think of more in the interim, segment three, we'll talk about a couple more plot twists if we have time. Beatles. Because this is, I I feel like my integrity is at stake here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's call it there. This is going to be a, uh, the end of segment one of the TMCJ podcast. Thank you all for listening, and you will hear us again soon.